So uh, today is a special day. We um, we wanted to do these things basically every month. Um, we kind of got distracted for, for a few months there. So we haven't done this for a bit. Uh, so there's a pretty big progress update. So I'm going to share with you guys a lot of really cool stuff that we've been up to, um, starting with, uh, with a couple of things here, right? So here's our agenda for today. Uh, I'm going to tell you about our newest algorithms, all the some of the new ones that we've created, especially the notable ones. We've, we've created a lot of different things, but the ones that are kind of uh, more uh, appealing and more enticing. Um, we're going to show you some, some results of like how we've been doing with these algorithms as well. Uh, we'll talk about our strategy library. We've made some improvements there. Uh, we'll talk about LumiBot for those of you that are developers. Um, some of the new things that we've created with LumiBot. Uh, we have made a lot of improvements with it. So I'm going to share with you a couple of things there. Uh, then we'll also talk about what's coming up next. And I'd, I'd also love to hear your opinion, what you guys would love to see from us. Uh, and then we'll talk about if you are not a member of any of our plans yet, we're going to talk about our starter pro and, and all access plan, a little bit of details on that. And at the very end, uh, I left it open for an ask me anything. So if you guys have any questions about literally anything, um, feel free to uh, save those towards the end and we can get into a bunch of different things towards the end of this uh, this class, right? Cool. Uh, before we get started, um, this is finance after all. So we have a disclaimer. Please read this. Um, make sure that you know, you're know you aware of the risks and all that kind of stuff involved. Uh, let me make sure I move this here because this is, there we go. Cool. So uh, please make sure that you read this. Um, we are finance, well, involved in finance. Um, so definitely this is, uh, this is quite important. All right, cool. So let me first tell you about our new algorithms. We have built a lot of really interesting new ones. Um, and let me uh, walk you through a couple of them. So first of all, I'm going to talk about our options EMA spreads. This is one of our most recent algorithms and it's being uh, actually driven mostly by a guy named Jack. Um, and he is going to be actually even teaching our Tuesday night classes, our live algo building sessions for a couple of weeks starting in September. I'm going to be off in Europe. He's taking over for me while I'm gone. Um, but to be quite honest with you, he might even be better than me. <laughs> he is a, an absolutely fantastic programmer, started coding when he was like 10 years old um, and just really building some quite amazing stuff. This is something that he built and we were working on actually last night. Uh, for those of you that are part of our live algo building sessions, if you're part of our pro plan or all access plan, you probably would have attended, you would have seen this. Um, I think this has a lot of potential, right? So basically what this does is it looks at EMA, um, looks at EMAs, right? To kind of figure out where things are trending. Are we trending up, trending down uh, on many different assets, right? So this one in particular uses SPY and TLT both together. Um, however, we're planning to add in a lot more like GLD um, and a few other ones to really diversify this quite a bit. And basically what this does is when it predicts that the market's going to be going up or going down, it will either buy put options or call options, specifically using a spread. Right? So if you guys don't know what a spread is for options, um, if you buy a call option, for example, you're betting on the market going up, basically, right? If you buy a put option, you're betting on it going down. But you can actually be a lot more efficient about that uh, by using a spread, right? So instead of just buying the call option, you'll buy a call option and then you'll sell another one further out in terms of strike prices. And that, uh, there's actually multiple different, you could do calendar spreads and all that too, but these are specifically with strikes. Uh, so when you sell it a little further out, you actually get that option for much cheaper. So it allows you to have higher leverage using less money. Um, it has a very favorable return dynamic. Uh, so basically, this is an algorithm that uses that, creates spreads for uh, put options and call options, and uh, basically invests in SPY and TLT. So these are results that we got last night. I think th this is the, basically the beginning, right? Um, whenever I see an algorithm doing this this well, this quickly, um, I think it's it's a really nice um, it's a really nice hot spot uh, to to, put, to to kind of put it that way, right? Um, when we back tested this from basically where did it start from September 2022 up until about today, um, actually this ended in March for some reason. I don't know why it ended in March. Um, I could rerun this going further, so it, it probably did a heck of a lot better uh, later this year. I didn't realize that this is what we did last night. We only entered it in March, but um, I think if we continue this until today, we'll probably see this trend 
continue to go up because it does really wear really well in bull markets. Um, and we got a, a really nice payout here. We got an 82, 83% return per year on average through our back tests, and we got a 41% drawdown. I think we can make this a heck of a lot better. I think there's a really nice bright spot in some of the things that we're working on, All right? So that's our options, EMA spreads. Uh, for those of you that are pro plan or all access plan members, that is now available inside the strategy library. If you go into the strategy library, check out uh, options, rolling EMA spreads. You could uh, have it here. Uh, we actually set it up last night so you could actually deploy this very easily to Replit. So if you want to actually have this thing working for you, you want to back test or whatever, it's all available here. Click the button to run on Replit. You know, uh, for those of you that are pro and all access members, you know, this is super easy. You could have this algorithm up and running for you in, you know, a couple minutes, right? Okay, cool. So that's one that we've been working on, uh, option spreads. Uh, another one that uh, we built recently, and this is uh, a little bit of a divergence from what we've been doing lately. We've been focused a lot on options lately. And this is not an options bot, okay? This is just trading stocks. Um, and this one's actually, I think, very interesting. So you see the performance here. Um, this is this is uh, copying this thing called alpha picks. So for those of you um, that have been trading for a while, you've probably heard of Seeking Alpha, right? So this is quite a popular website. They have a lot of really good articles. They do a lot of really good analysis. They're kind of like in the in the realm of Motley Fool, that sort of thing. Uh, I think a lot better than them, but it, they're they're same sort of thing. They produce a lot of articles and things like that. Um, they have this thing called Alpha Picks. Okay, I'm registered for it here. I don't want to show too much because. Um, it is proprietary stuff, but I, I do want to show you kind of the, the basics of it. Um, their portfolio has done very well lately. You can see the S&P 500 uh, was up 48% over this time period. Their picks, and, and they give you basically a new pick, a new stock pick every month. Um, their picks have outperformed the stock market by quite a lot, right? Uh, S&P was up 48% over that same time period. They're up 125%. So two and a half times the stock market about. Um, that's pretty damn good, especially we consider compounding gets involved and this can really make a heck of a lot more money in the long run. Um, so what we did, and and actually what I've been doing personally is I've been following these picks for the better part of a year. And um, I've made some good money off this personally. Uh, I've just been trading it manually. Uh, for example, one month they brought up uh, Modine Manufacturing. That was one pick that they said was going to do very well. I'm like, sure, whatever. I put in like 15 grand into it or 20 grand into it. Um, that 20 grand has grown a lot. I've made almost a, or more than $100,000, I think, off that one pick alone, right? So think about that. Um, they, they've also made a lot of other good recommendations, like Sprouts recently has been doing really well. Like they, they, they've made a lot of really good picks. Um, again, without giving away their secret sauce, you can see here, Abercrombie and Fitch, since they picked it up 200%. App Lovin, since they picked it up 114%. Celestica up 96%. I don't want to show you too much more because again, this is their secret sauce. Um, but they do really well, right? Their, their picks have been performing very, very well. And I've been doing this manually, like a sucker. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I figured, you know what? Like we're, I've been doing this manually. I, I miss a lot of these picks. There's one in particular that I missed, SMCI. They recommended that. If I had picked it when they said to do it, I would have made a thousand percent return on my investment. I missed it because I was too busy. I was doing other things. So what we decided is basically, why don't we just automate this process, right? So I spent the weekend. Uh, this is a pretty quick bot to, to build because we basically used the code from our diversified leverage. So we were able to build it pretty quickly. But now we have a bot that can basically copy alpha picks, right? So this portfolio that's done, you know, 125% versus a 46, you can now just copy that. We make it super simple for you. The only uh, thing about this, though, is that you will have to subscribe to Alpha Picks. It's $500 per year, not per month, per year. So if you want to use them, subscribe to Alpha Picks. Let me know. Send us proof that you've actually done this and we can get this algorithm set up for you. I'm running it personally. I actually have three different versions of it because they have um, strong buys and they have buys and holds, right? So we have bots that are, okay, just, just invest in the strong buys, just invest in... Buy, strong buys and buys and then invest in all of them. So we have three different bots running. Uh, you guys will see that very shortly inside of trading signals. 
uh, and you'll be able to see that actually growing over time. All right. That's another bot we made. This one I'm actually quite interested in. Um, I'm planning to personally put something like 20, 25K into this sometime very shortly. Cool. Um, another bot that we've worked on. This one is crazy. Um, and actually, I didn't realize this one was doing so freaking well until I looked at our uh, our channel recently. Um, and I'm going to talk about our results as well. But this one is up a lot. This is an actual real life trading. Um, it's up 65% in the past 30 days, it's killing it. And it kind of makes sense. When you look at this back testing result, this is very, very impressive, right? 400% uh, annualized return. It's a short back testing period. So take it with a grain of salt um, because it didn't go through the COVID years and all that kind of stuff. But from the years that it actually did go over, it is one heck of an impressive result here, right? Very, very stable looking graph. Trending upwards hard, 400% annualized return with only a 15% drawdown. That's freaking super ultimate platinum in my books. Um, this is something that actually we worked on a while ago and we kind of stopped looking into until recently. I'm looking at our our, um, our trading signals and this thing is really taken off. Um, so this is a new uh, algorithm. If you guys are part of our pro or all access plan, again, just go into here, uh, you could see uh, the, where is this? Spreads Martingale, it's called Options Spreads Martingale. Just click on that and then you can deploy it again, just single button, run on Replit. You can deploy this thing, get it running for yourself as well. All right, so super, super interesting results. Um, and actually this is one that I would expect to do even better in a bull market as well. So, um, you know, if you can depending on what you think is gonna happen, um, it's quite, quite good. But even, even here, you could see stock market fell. It still survived. Stock market fell here, survived, no problem. Crash happened here, no problems. Um, so it's, it's been doing quite, quite well, right? All right, awesome. So that's our spreads, Martin Gale. Um, that one I'm super interested in personally. We also made a bunch of, uh, new versions of our Condor Martin Gales. Uh, this is one that uh, a lot of you guys have probably heard of. Right, basically, it trades iron condors. Um, iron condors. For those of you that don't understand what an iron condor is, it looks like this. Basically, it's options strategy where you sell two options and then buy two options. And the idea is that you want to keep the price in the middle, right? So here's the price of the stock. If it goes down, it goes this way. You start to lose money. If it goes up, you start to lose money. So the point is, you want to keep your stock price in the middle. So as long as it's a calm market. It, they tend to do quite well. Um, this is one, we had our Martingale one running back in the day. I think we made 150% in like two months when, when the markets were nice and calm. Uh, so they have a lot of earnings potential. They really can make quite a bit of money. Um, however, they have had a little bit of challenge recently just because of all the volatility. They're meant to be uh, things that work really well in low volatility, right? So when things are, calm, which the markets have definitely not been calm lately. Uh, everything from Trump getting shot to, you know, changes for, for people that are running for president to, I mean, really the, the, the election in general has just been causing an insane amount of volatility. I wouldn't expect that to stop for, for a little while. Um, you saw the market just crash 15% and now we're back almost where we started even faster, which is just wild. Um, but we did make a, a few new versions that we've been testing out. And I think some of these have some good potential, um, especially once the markets calm down a little bit. So I made version 10 of our Condor Martingale. This one we got in our back testing 286% annualized return with a 35% drawdown. So really nice Romad, really nice looking uh, graph here, uh, quite stable. Um, basically what we did with version 10 with our Condor Martingales is we use a, a index called the VIX one day to look at a lot of the stuff. Do we trade today or not uh, using the VIX one day? Uh, this one also has a very short martingale. Um, so instead of having, uh, we had very long martingales where you like double your money, double your money. This one's very short. So you don't, so the chance of like a massive implosion is theoretically lower. Um, and we're using a very high delta right? Which uh, is one of the reasons why it's making so much money because the higher deltas, you, you tend to make more money. Um, 
So uh, basically, it's you know whenever the markets are calm, it can it can make quite very good money. But it's using the VIX one day index to figure out when the market's calm. So as you can see here, it hasn't really traded much recently because markets have been crazy, which is a good thing. It's actually turned itself off. It said, you know what, things are too crazy right now. Wait until things calm down again, and it's going to start trading again then, right? So that's our version ten. Um, some pretty nice back testing results. We also made a couple of martingales that uh, or condor martingales that are not martingales, right? So this one um, doesn't have that doubling up nature, right? So our condor martingales, if you guys know them, basically uh, a, a lot of them, what they do is they'll double their money, double their money, double their money, and that's how they end up winning so often uh, because every time they lose, they double their money and they get a second shot at bat and then a third shot at bat and that sort of thing. Um, but we got some feedback from people that some people find Martin Gales to be a little bit too aggressive or a little bit too risky. Uh, so we built a bunch that do not have Martin Gales, right? So version 11 is one of those, uh, it uses a very low Delta, a, a Delta of 10. And we also added a stop loss to it of a hundred percent. So basically, um, the stop loss, it depends on, uh, how close you are to the edges here. So 100% stop loss is when you hit the cell. Uh, and then if you go from, you know, you made the condor in the middle here, your stock was in the middle here, halfway is a 50% stop loss, all the way is 100% stop loss. So we added that in to basically prevent them from having any kind of serious explosions um, because with lower deltas, when you lose, you lose bigger than when you win. So adding in that stop loss gave us a really nice uh, improvement in the returns. So here's uh, that version 11, and again, available uh, if you guys want to run these uh, inside of the strategy library, just go to the uh, Condor Martingale. And then now when you run this, we actually have all the back tests in here. So you can go through all the different back tests, uh, version one, version two, all of them here are available. So you can actually go through each of one of them. And when you run this thing, you now have something they could use called live config to actually pick which version you wanna run. So this, this bot is now 14 different bots, right? It's all the kind of the same idea of using iron condors, but we have all these different variations of it. Things that watch the VIX and don't trade in the VIX, things that use higher deltas or lower deltas, uh, all sorts of different things, stop losses, you know, many different configurations they could use. And that's all available here. Again, run on Replit, set your trade year access token and all that. And then you also will have to pick your live config. You put in which configuration you want to use. Do you want to use paper one, two, three, 11, 14, whatever you want to use. Uh, it's all available there, right? So this one in, in this case would be paper underscore 11 if you want to run this one, right? Uh, we also created version 12, which is very similar to version 11. Oh, the only difference is that we have a higher delta. Instead of a 10, we use a 12, which increased the return. Right, so this is a seventy-seven percent annualized return uh, through our back testing, right, and uh, a pretty reasonable drawdown as well. We also did version thirteen, which has a higher delta than that even. So this is the delta of fourteen now, and uh, this one has a tighter stop loss. So stop loss is is forty percent or 0.4 instead, which means that it's it's taking more risk because it's a higher delta but it's more conservative because it doesn't let uh, the prices get away from you. So uh, it's, it has a much tighter stop loss. So this one actually has quite a nice return here, a 67% uh, annualized through this back test and uh, only a 21% drawdown over this time period. This is also going back four years, so quite a, a longer back test. Uh, so that gives a very nice row mat of three. It's a very nice return there or risk to return ratio. And then we also made version 14, which is basically the same thing as 13, just more aggressive. It's just trading more contracts at a time, All right? So those are a couple of our new Martingales, uh, if you want to choose any of those as well, All right? So a uh, quick recap, uh, we have our EMA spreads. That's a new one. You can find that in the strategy library. We have our alpha pick bot. Uh, if you want to use that, reach out to me. Um, Spreads Martingale. This one has some pretty crazy returns. That roam out of 26 is completely insane. Um, that's because the return is so damn high and the, the drawdown is so damn low. Um, pretty damn impressive, if you ask me. And then all the new Martingales here. These are all, again, available inside the strategy library, and you can use them if you're a pro or all access plan subscriber. All right.
Cool. Um, any questions around any of those? I'm going to check uh, here. Uh, so I see John says, thank you for that. I want to see if anyone's commenting on our YouTube or our Instagram. All right, let's see our YouTube. I'm going to check out our channel and see our what Instagram is watching. Oh, there you go. I'm going to turn off. Okay, cool. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to, to post them. I'm going to be checking uh, not just our Zoom sessions, but I'm also going to be checking our um, our social media. All right, cool. So next thing, let's talk about actual, actually, okay, there you go. Eric Redden, um, quick question. Can you explain the strategy in more detail? Which strategy are you talking about, Eric? Well, I, you went through several of the uh, the option spread martingales. Um, not that familiar with what they are, what they're doing. Maybe if you could just, I, I, I'm familiar with options and, and whatnot, but uh, what are they looking at? Where um, where are they selling the body? Where are they buying wings? Um, like what delta are they they selling? Which is what delta are they buying? What's the the time period that they're doing it on? Sure. When's it entering? When's it exiting? Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Like, I do all that. Yeah. Um, just like it, it, if it's yeah, as much detail as you can, so I get a better understanding of what it's doing and when. Sure. So, uh, so um, kind of begin with. Um, you can customize all that stuff, right? So you're talking about when to buy, all that kind of stuff, but that's all customizable, right? Um, so let me walk through, let's say one of them, right? So here's paper 10 and all the configurations for it. Let me zoom in a little bit in case you guys want to see. So here is the entire configuration, okay? This one, specifically 10, is trading the SPY, okay? It has a days to expiry of one. So it's basically buying or selling the Condor that's expiring the next day. Right. Um, wing size is one. Right. So we're talking about, uh, you know, th this part here. This is the wing size. This is one uh, strike. Right. Or one dollar. Right. On both sides. Yeah. Um, delta it's using is 28. So basically the delta that it uses is that's how it finds the cells. So when it finds a delta of 28, those are the cells on both sides on the puts and on the calls. So negative 28 for the puts, positive 28 for the calls, and then a $1 wing spread, right? Um, then there's pause after loss. There's a couple other things we can do here. Uh, those are all turned off. Uh, quantities to trade. This is the Martingale part of it. Uh, so it trades 30 contracts. Um, this is scaled to a $25,000 account. So if you use the $5,000 account, divide this by five. If you use the $50,000 account, multiply this by two. Is all scaled to 25k. So uh assuming you're trading with a 25k account, you buy 30 options, right? 30 con or sell 30 condors. So 30 times four, right? Because condors are four different options, right? If it loses, if it loses money, it will increase the amount of contracts it's buying to 75. If it loses money again, it increases it to 225. If it loses again, it goes back down to 30. Right? It kind of does that. Right, so this is the condor part of it. Um, the 11 and 12, they are simply using, um, in this case, just one number, right? So they're not a con, they're not a martingale, right? So 11, 12, 13, 14 are not martingales. Uh, the rest of them, they are martingales and they will increase the amount of contracts that they buy if they lose to basically have a second shot at bat kind of thing, right? Uh, there's a mathematical reason for it. I'm not going to get into that. But uh, th there's a reason why you want to do that for, for Martingale. Uh, you end up having a much higher probability of success and you end up having a much smoother looking graph. Uh, the time that it buys it is at 15.45. So 3.45 p.m. every day. Buys one that expires a day out, right? Um, a lot of these are turned off here. We turn off a bunch of those settings. Uh, we use multi-leg orders to trade it. Um, and then this one in particular is looking at the VIX. So it's looking at that VIX one day index. If it's over 11, it does not trade. If it's 11 or less, it will trade. So it's quite, quite conservative in that manner. Um, so that's probably one of the reasons why it's doing so well is because it's super, super conservative in terms of the VIX. Um, so right now it's not even trading, right? Like right now it's, it's too high. It's, you know, the volatility is way too crazy right now. We're staying out of the market, right? That's basically what's happening here. And then it has a strike stop loss of 1.3, which would mean 
uh, 100% is here, 130% would be somewhere out here, right? Somewhere, somewhere a little further, right? Okay, so that's that's this one in particular. Um, they're all different. You can configure it however you want. Um, if you need someone to walk you through how to back test this and whatever, we can show you how to do that. You can back test it yourself, try different configurations. Um, but that's kind of the gist of it, right? Is that, does that make sense for you? Yeah, it makes sense. That's what I was looking to kind of figure out. And it's just doing that every day then, uh, on an ongoing basis, when it sees those indications, it's going to run it. And if it doesn't get stopped out, it's going to hold it to expiration and just let it expire. Exactly. Okay. It always holds it to expiration. Okay. And if it hits the stop, it's still going to do the double up, like, or increase the size from yes. 30 to correct. 75 to, to 225. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if it doesn't hit the stop loss, uh, if it, if it ends up with a small loss, it would, it would still trigger the, the, the size increase. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So whenever, whenever the account value is decreased, right. Um, so whether that's from a stop loss or not from a stop loss, whatever, right. If the account value has gone down, it's going to go up that ladder. Right. Unless of course it's a version 11, 12 or 13 or 14, which does not have a martingale attached to it. Okay. And none of them have profit targets. They're all stop loss targets like, or expiration. Yeah, correct. We don't have any profit targets on them yet. Uh, that's something that we've considered to add in. Um, we specifically want to add in a trailing profit. Um, we just haven't had a chance to build that yet. But that's that's a feature that we've discussed many times before. Cool. Okay. Any other questions? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Thanks. No problem. Awesome. Okay, cool. So let me take you through a couple of results. So here's some results of how these things have been doing. Um how, oh, sorry, there's one more question here. How she says, may I ask if 1.3 is a magic number? I did some tests at home and figure 1.3 is the best result. 1.4, 1.5 are compatible, but less good, but less than 1.2 and greater than 1.6 are going way lower profit and higher drawdown. Uh, how she, it really depends on what you're trading. Um, like what I've found, for example, these, these have a stop loss of 0.4. That was the ideal for this, right? So it depends, right? Like what is your delta... What is your VIX? You know, like that, all that is going to matter a lot. I wouldn't put a, a, a hard cap like that, 1.4 or 0.4 or anything like that. Um, I, I've at least I found from back testing, um, you know, we've seen it all in class is that it depends on what your delta is, what your VIX is, and, you know, it depends on the rest of your setup, right? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say greater than 1.4, less than 1.4, you know, it's, it depends, right? Yeah. So in this case, 0.4. And again, 0 0.4 in this case, right? In these cases, it was one, right? So it depends. I know you actually, uh, Hauchi, you had, uh, you had a really interesting one too that I want to build out. Uh, you brought this up. Um, and for those of you that didn't see it in the channel, I'm actually pretty interested in this one. Um, Hauchi, you brought this up a while back. Let me see if I can find it here. You had a really nice back test that you showed. And I'm like, huh, maybe we should actually make that one of the configurations because you got one hell of a romad. Yeah, this is it right here. Um, I want to build this out, right? So I think the you, you said they took the paper six and then you added a 1.3 stop loss and you got this type of result. This looks super appealing to me. Romad of 10, very nice looking straight graph. I think it's great. I'd like to test this going back further, right? Because this is, this is a pretty short back test. But uh, if this is consistent going back further, then this could be a very, very nice result as well. So I, I have this on my to-do list to actually uh, maybe make this into a paper 15, right, is uh, kind of what I'm thinking here. Right. So that was, uh, was uh, just wanted to bring that up, Hauchi, because I have been paying attention to that. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. Okay. So let's let's dig into some re results. Okay, so first of all, um, Spreads Martingale is just absolutely crushing it. Um, it did start off not the best when we were looking at it. Um, so I was, I, I almost stopped thinking about it because we ran it. And it's like it just kept fall falling. But really it was falling. Like if you look at the timeline here, this is all that crazy volatility that happened, right? The entire stock market crashed hard around here. I think we entered into a technical correction in the NASDAQ, and I don't know if the S&P as well, but we this turned into a correction very quickly. So 
Um, so those actually fall in the market. And it makes sense because this is really a strategy that bets on the markets going up. It's it's a directional strategy. So if markets are going down, it's not going to do as well. Uh, but you can see that it made one hell of a recovery. So if we match that up to what the S&P did, this thing is killing the S&P actually. Right? So let's say um, this is the spread started on July 10th. Right, so let's say we go back to July 10. So right around here, you see a big crash and then the market recovered, but it didn't get back to the same peak again. Um, I really should have bought some stocks around here. I was this is another thing. I had this, I had this in my to-do list. I was gonna do this and but anyways, um, so the market did recover, but not as high as the peak. Whereas you can see here the spreads martingale is a lot higher than the peak, right? So it started at 120. And now it's all the way up to, what is this, 170 almost. So it is actually beating the market by a very nice margin here. Um, this is really making me rethink this strategy. I think it's a fantastic result. Um, we kind of stopped thinking about it, I think, because we ran it and it just didn't do well at the beginning. Uh, but ends up, it was just bad market conditions. So I think I think this is actually a pretty interesting one. Um, I'm going to keep running this. I'm going to make a few different variations of this too to kind of analyze a little bit more what's happening here. But I mean, right now, this is looking like one of our best algorithms to be quite honest with you. Um, it is up 65% in 30 days. That is one hell of a return. Um, so if you guys had put your money into this, assuming that you're you're doing the same performance as, as the paper trading, uh, this is not live money, this is paper trading. Um, but assuming you perform pretty much the same, which I don't see why you wouldn't, um, or at least pretty damn closely, 65% in 30 days. That is a damn good return. All right, so that's our spreads. Um, currently, the one that's been more in my mind than anything else right now is this one. Um, another one, so here's our condors. So our condors are actually going through a, a major test right now. So this is this time period is probably the worst possible time to run iron condors because they specifically make money when things are calm. And things are very far from calm right now. We actually, um, in class, something two weeks ago in our in our um, uh, our live algo hour uh, or live algo building sessions, um, we went through this. And and, and Stacy, one of one of the people in our group, he brought this up. He, he looked at the VIX and put a um, Bollinger bands around it. I think it was Bollinger bands or RSI. There's an RSI around the VIX, and this period right now is extremely rare. The VIX spiking as much as it did, last time this happened was in um, 2020 during COVID and before that was 2008. So this is a very, very hard time period for condors. Um, not surprisingly, they're not doing incredibly well. Although some of them are actually sticking up a heck of a lot better than I would have thought. Uh, for example, our Martingale 8, this one uh, basically just stopped trading. Eight and nine just stopped trading completely because they have that thing, they're looking for the VIX, they're looking for the VIX one day index, and it's been too high. So basically they've just been flat. If you're looking at it, they look kind of boring, but that's exactly what they should be doing, right? Um, just turn it off. We don't need this running right now. Um, even our, our Martingale 12, this one doesn't have a VIX one. And this one actually isn't down that much. It's down, uh, I think 2% from its from its peak, uh, from the beginning, I mean. So it went up and then fell. So it's, it's net net down only about 2%. That surprises the hell out of me, given how bad the market has been for condors. So these things are actually sticking up for themselves fairly well. Um, some of them do worse than others. Um, if you look at our 14, it's not doing so hot. Um, but some of them are actually able to withstand this uh, this volatility. So to me, the way that I'm looking at it is I think this is a very good time to test these things and make sure that they're working very well. Because if you can make it work well in bad situations, then in good situations, I believe it's going to do a heck of a lot better. So that's our condors. Um, not a good time for them, but still, still in there. They're still hanging in there, right? Um, looking forward to the days where we go back to these types of returns, right? Um, and then also we have our diversified leverage is another one. Um, we've been running this for a long time. It just continues to impress. Uh, for those of you, you know, you guys signed up for this and, and, um, we, you know, our diversified leverage is, we say it's one of our more basic algorithms and that sort of thing. But a lot of people, I feel like, ignore it because of that. So I think we got to stop saying that because this is one I've had, this is real money, by the way. 
this is not fake money. This is not paper trading. This is my real money in this account. Um, it's grown to $5,000, right? I think I put in, what, 30, around 3,500 or something. Now it's almost $5,000. It's been about a year, right? This thing just continues to do well. It's a very impressive algorithm. Simple, but works. You know what I mean? Um, so it just continues to take off. Since, since inception, it's up 40%. Right, that is a heck of a lot better in the stock market. If you look at the stock market over the past year, it has done well. It's up 27%. This thing is up 38%. So it beat the stock market by a nice chunk of change. All right. Cool. All right. So that's uh, some of our results, a couple of different algorithms there. We're going to be running, by the way, a lot more algorithms and paper trading. All these ones that I was telling you about. Um, EMA spreads, plan to run this one pretty soon once we kind of figure out the back test a little better. Um, Alpha pick spot, I started running this like two days ago. We don't have enough track record yet, but we will hopefully in a month or two. I'll be able to show you guys some updates. And then the spreads Martingale, this one is just taking off. I really want to spend more time on this. Um, so we're going to be launching a bunch more stuff inside of paper trading, and I'm going to be launching some stuff uh, with my live money account soon as well. All right. Cool. Any questions around that? Awesome. Cool. Okay. So let's talk about a strategy library really, really quickly. Uh, for those of you that are pro or all access subscribers, um, we have made some improvements to our strategy library that I want to uh, tell you guys about. Uh, first of all, we've added a lot of new algorithms. Um, some of you guys, when you've signed up, there's maybe like three or four in there. Uh, now we have over 20. We have a lot more algorithms in our strategy library. So when you take a look here, let's go back. I'm going to zoom out. Um, you can see here, we have quite a few, you know, view all repositories. There's 27 for me. You guys don't have access to that some of this is private client stuff. Um, but we have well over 20 algorithms now they can choose from everything, breakouts, straddles, news trading, all sorts of different things in here that you guys can choose from and trade with, right? So there, the selection is growing quite quickly. Um, also, um, we, and I kind of showed you this earlier, we've been trying to make this a little bit better organized, especially because some of our algorithms are getting quite sophisticated, right? So we added in the back tests folder to, into a couple of different algorithms. So keep an eye out for this, for any strategies that have configuration files, which we're trying to add more and more algorithms like that, uh, because we've noticed that like you step an algorithm and do one thing. Um, well, you can make it do other things too, right? And and maybe different configurations work for different situations, things like that. So here um, we have inside of our source directory, which is we're trying to do that too, kind of keep things more organized. Uh, we'll have configurations. These are all the different configs, for example, for this one, right? And then we'll have the back test folder so you can go through each back test. What does each one look like? We're trying to be as, as uh open, transparent, and um, and easy to understand as possible, right? Um, to kind of also let you know, uh, and actually I should add this to another thing is, um, we're going to be adding uh, a lot of these algorithms to our website. So you'll be able to do like a search and filter type thing. So do you wanna have algorithms that have high drawdowns, low drawdowns? Do you want something that has a good ROMAD? Like, so you can actually filter stuff out um, and then, you know, find the thing that, that is most appealing to you. All right. Uh, so, uh, there you go. So we have, uh, more algorithms, back tests are now inside of a folder easier. Uh, and also we're trying to start doing this, uh, where we use this live config variable. I mentioned this earlier. Um, if you want to run some algorithms, uh, for, right now it's only for one, it's only for the Mar Condor Martingale, but we're going to add more of them like this, where you just change the live config um, environment variable or secret in, in Replit. Uh, when you set that to whatever, paper one, paper two, wh whatever the name of the configuration is, it will automatically do that. So it makes it a lot easier. Instead of changing code, you don't need to change anything in code anymore. It's all just environment variables. We've made it as simple as possible. All right, cool. Uh, any questions around that? Maybe it's a... Uh another conversation, but a walkthrough that might be helpful. A walkthrough of what? How you set up the, the live config environment. Uh, maybe it's because I'm new here. Uh, maybe I'll get like a walkthrough of it later, but. 
Nice. Yeah, yeah. So what, what I'd recommend for that, um, I think you set up a call with me on Friday. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we can talk about it on Friday. Uh, it's more of a technical thing. Um, you could also get on the phone with Tommy. He could show you how to launch one of these things. Um, he doesn't even know how to use this thing yet, so I got to explain it to him. But it's quite simple. Um, once you've once you've ran a few algorithms, let me see if I can show you here. Basically, here are your secrets. It's just another one of these. Whenever you run an algorithm, you'll usually put in your trade your access token, your trader account number. You'll say, is it paper or not? That's usually what people run. There's a bunch of other stuff you can put in too. This is optional, right? I put this stuff in because I run a lot of them and we need to keep track of them and things like that. Um, this is like specifically sending out Discord messages. This is linking to our database, that sort of thing. You don't need to do that. Um, but the new one would be just go like this, live config and then whatever the actual thing is, right? So you can go paper... 12, let's say, if you want to run that one, add the secret and then run it that way, right? Uh, if that's still a little over your head, um, again, talk to Tommy. He could help you with actually running some of these things. Go through our workshops. The workshops will show you how to run them as well. And then we can also talk about it on Friday when we have our call, right? Okay, thanks. Cool, no problem. Okay, cool. Um, so next order of business, let's talk about some improvements to LumiBot. We've made a lot of improvements. Um, not just me, um, there's been a lot of people working on this. Um, so a couple of things that we've done since the last time we had this update, um, we've made a lot of updates to our back testing. We've improved our tear sheets. You guys have probably noticed they now have this big number on it. It's a heck of a lot easier to read now. Before it used to just be this big thing and I used to explain, oh yeah, squint your eyes and look at this number, right? Now we've made it uh, a lot easier to read and, and look through. We're actually planning to even improve this further um, aesthetically and, and a few other things we're planning, but that's that was a pretty big improvement. I know a lot of people really like that. Um, along with back tests, you also get a lot more CSV files now, uh, one of them of which is uh, tearsheet.csv. There's one more as well that I can't remember the name of it, but you get a lot more files now that you'll be able to track and see You know what exactly happens during this back test, what results did you get, and you can go through it programmatically, right? That's the whole point of this is creating more CSV files because the tear sheet already is created, but it's a visual. It's like human can look at it. It's going to be harder for a, a, a robot to look through that. Whereas the tear sheet.csv is, is machine readable. So if you want to automate these things, it's easier. We also had a really big speed improvement. Um, I spent a couple of days just really working on speeding up uh, the back tests. Um, this is maybe a little bit older news now, but it is since our last update. Um, we have maybe a 4x speed improvement, uh, especially trading options. So backtesting has gone a lot faster. Um, definitely planning to keep doing that. Um, maybe in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to sit down again, maybe with someone else, and we could go through and, and speed up this backtesting further. There's a lot that we can do to add efficiency. All right. So that's our backtesting. Uh, we also added multi-leg orders. Um, so now whenever we place trades and, and along with limit prices, by the way, that's really important. So what we found is that when we were placing these trades for options, especially the ones that like had really low deltas, very far the money, we were getting really bad fills. So we basically added in multi-leg orders. Now, if you're trading condors, we only use multi-legs. There's, there is no option to turn that off anymore. It's just on, or at least all of them are set to on. And then we use limit prices as well to get better fills because we were noticing that, you know, if we put out market orders, we were losing money just on buying and selling. Like we're getting eaten alive just because of that. Um, so now they actually, we could place them as uh, multi-legs with limit prices. We're getting much better fills. We're seeing that our algorithms are performing a lot better because of that, right? So that's one big thing. Uh, another really big one, and I got to give credit to Hauchi, uh, who is here right now. Thank you very much for this one, Hauchi. Uh, he's been doing a really, really good job doing Theta Data integrations. Um, so if you guys don't know what Theta Data is, uh, basically it's a competitor to Polygon. This is them, Theta Data. Uh, they're not as big as Polygon, but they do have really good data for very good prices. So if you guys want to do options back testing, this is now available. You can use Theta Data to back test your algorithms, pay $40 a month for four years of data as opposed to Polygon which is, let me pull this up here, Polygon, which for options back testing, that same amount of data going back four years will set you back $80 a month. 
So it's a lot cheaper to get data. It's literally half the price. And it's also better data. It's better data, A, because it has more uh, prices. Um, data data is pulling in multiple different data feeds, whereas Polygon only uses one data feed, which means that there's going to be a lot of missing data in Polygon that data data will have. So it's better quality data in that sense. It has more price data, more fidelity. Um, but then also it has bids and asks. And this is a really big one. And I know, Haochi, you spent a lot of time doing this. Um, you can now use get quote within a back test and it'll actually return back the quote of what happened at that specific time. And I know Hauchi as well, he's working on adding that into our fills as well. So for example, if you're trading a very e-liquid option, this is really important, right? If you're trading like a 10 Delta or an eight Delta, or even someone I heard was doing like a five Delta, that's way out of the money. Um, it would be very unwise to trade that without looking at the bid ask spread and figuring out where to actually place that with limit orders. I think it'd be very reckless to do it without that, right? Now we could actually replicate that in back testing because of theta data. We could actually get that, those quotes. And then what we're also planning on doing is, um, or, or we, uh, really it's more Hauchi. I know he's been working on this a lot. He's put a lot of effort into this. Um, I know he's working on uh, the ability when we actually place the trade that it can get filled using bid and ask prices. So if we don't have a price that happened anywhere near that time, we could actually fall back on bid and ask, and that can add a lot of accuracy to our back tests, especially for these uh, out of the money options. All right, so that's a, a really nice improvement there and, and still ongoing. So we're, we're still gonna see more and more come out of that. So again, thank you, Hauchi, it's fantastic. Great job there. Okay, so we have that. Uh, another thing we did, we added uh, interactive brokers uh, we can now run interactive brokers in the cloud. I'm not sure you guys noticed this, uh, but we made some changes to LumiBot to allow for that. But then also within the strategies themselves, we have Docker files now. So if you go into, for example, Condor Martingale, this Docker file will enable you to run this thing in the cloud for interactive brokers. It's only for interactive brokers. So if you know how to use Docker, you can run this thing, get it up and going. Uh, but also a lot of these cloud services, like for example, we use render.com, or if you use uh, AWS or whatever, they know how to read Docker files and they could actually just deploy this thing. It makes it very easy to deploy to interactive brokers. Before that was something that was pretty much impossible. Uh, now you can actually do that with uh, these Docker files and the newest LumiBot. So if you guys are interested in interactive brokers for whatever reason, um, they tend to have some very good pricing. They're good internationally. They have futures, they have Forex, they have options, they have a lot of stuff. Uh, if you guys wanna run interactive brokers, that is now possible, all right? in the cloud specifically. Before you are able to run interactive brokers on your computer, now you can run it in the cloud because of this Docker setup, right? Uh, we also removed the need for uh, uh, credentials.py folders. Uh, thank you, Emma, appreciate that. Um, and how she says, thank you, Rob, a lot of credit for me, cannot do it without your instructions. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I guess it's some teamwork, but you've definitely done by far the bulk of the effort. So you, you very much, um, you definitely deserve the credit, Hauchi. Uh, cool, okay, so so next thing is, uh, there's no more need for credential.py folders. <laughs> Love you too, Hauchi. Um, there, there's no more need for credential.py uh, files. You may have noticed that we've de started deleting them across the board. Uh, we haven't deleted them everywhere yet. Um, but let's say, for example, let's say, for example, in our Condor Martingale, um, I'm most familiar with this. I'm, I'm going there. So notice, first of all, it's not anywhere in the SRC folder. There's no credentials.py anymore. Instead, you can go from lumibot.credentials and load all that stuff up they had before, right? So I could say is back testing, or I could load in, um, you know, theta data, config, I can load in all that kind of stuff from lumibot.credentials. I don't have to have a separate credentials.py folder. And furthermore, for things like um, the da database connection string, um, Discord URL, um, all, all those different types of things are automatically put into your strategy. So whereas before, when we scroll down to the bottom here, Whereas before we were running this stuff and we had to put, okay, this is our Discord URL. We used to, we used to go like this, Discord 
webhook URL and then put it in. And then we'd go, um, you know, account history, database string, we put all that in. Now you don't need to do that anymore. That's all automatic. It will automatically, LumiBot will read your .env file if you're on your computer, or we'll read uh, your secrets if you're in uh, Replit or on in, in the cloud or anything like that. So you no longer need to use uh, all those other things. So again, really trying to get more uh, things through environment variables to make it a lot easier to run all this stuff, right? Okay, and then of course, as with any time, um, we had a lot of bug fixes and stability improvements. We've improved a lot of things with uh, multi-leg orders, with interactive brokers. We've made a lot, a lot of things uh, improved in terms of stability and bugs. Uh, if you guys want to use this new stuff, really easy. Pip install upgrade LumiBot. Run that on your computer to upgrade. Or if you want to do it in Replit, poetry add LumiBot equals latest. Uh, do that inside of shell. Inside of shell. Right, so if you go into uh, Replit, go into Shell, type this in, poetry at Lumibot equals latest, it'll upgrade you to the latest. All right. Cool. Um, any questions around that, guys? All right. Nathan says, I have to drop already cloned options, spreads Martingale, and running a back test now. Looking forward to catching the rest of this on replay. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Nathan. Good seeing you. Awesome. Cool. Okay. So let's talk about what's coming next. So here's a couple of things we're working on. Um, there's one more thing I want to add to this list. What was it? Um, I'm not remembering right now. But I literally mentioned it when at the beginning of uh, we were going through this. Uh, what the heck was it again? Um, that's all right. Okay. So, so a couple of things that we're planning on doing um, over the next couple of weeks and months. Uh, is we want to update the algo trading course. I know we've been saying this for a while. Um, th this drum just keep, keeps getting louder and louder. People keep asking for this. So I already recorded some of the new algo trading course. I'm going to start recording a lot more of it, including like how to run a back test on your computer, um, how to get last price, how to get historical prices, how to do tactical analysis. I'm going to run, I'm going to record all those videos and put them into our algo trading course. They are technically in there right now. If But the thing is, I know a lot of you guys say, you watch our algo train course. It's too long of a video, two hours or three hours each. It's a long thing to go through. I get it. So what we're doing instead is we're making these little bite-sized lectures, five minutes long, 10 minutes long, uh, basically just doing that across the board. So it's a lot easier for you guys to digest and go through, right? So I've already, again, I've already recorded a bunch of them. We're going to start putting those up and then I'm going to start going through things like, you know, how to back test, how to do this, how to do whatever. Uh, and we'll have this uh, this algo train course brand new. Hopefully, in the next couple of weeks, you guys will start seeing uh, some new stuff there. Uh, we're also planning on doing more workshops, especially for pro clan members. Um, we are thinking about maybe doing workshops now twice a month as opposed to once a month. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Especially for things like you know, um, you brought this up, Eric. You know, how do you use the live config? Well, we'll show you how to do that in a workshop, right? So before we do them once a month. I'm thinking twice a month now. Um, people, there's been a strong demand for these workshops, so uh, I think we're going to start accelerating how much we do those. Uh, we used to do, uh, we have, or at least I do four live presentations per month. Uh, that's public domain. Um, one of them was this thing called Three Secrets. I'm starting to find a lot of people they don't want to show up to that because it's it's, rep it's repetitive, right? Um, so we'll probably just turn that into a, a recording that people could watch, and then we'll just replace that with workshops. So we'll do workshops twice a month. We'll do our monthly update once a month, and then uh, we'll do a live um, algo building session that's public once a month as well. That's the plan. Um, we're also going to start working on a website soon. Um, so this is a really exciting idea that we want to build out. Uh, and actually, I've been working on raising capital. If you guys are interested in investing in Lumi Wealth, like us as a company, let me know because we're actually in the process of raising capital right now. So if you want to invest in us, reach out to me. Let me know. Uh, we could have that conversation because uh, we are looking to raise money. And specifically, we're looking to raise money to build out a website and an iPhone app. Because we find we're finding that we have a lot of people using our stuff um, and we have some great algorithms and, you know, our, our track record just keeps getting better and better and, and we can keep going in that direction. But a lot of people uh, I'm finding, um, they're just finding it difficult to kind of get these things off the ground. 
right? There is a bit of a learning curve. We, we, we can't deny that, right? Like if, if you want to run an algorithm, it's going to take you, you know, maybe half an hour to learn how to do it the first time. Second time around, it's really easy. Third time around, it's, you know, you can do it eyes closed, right? But there is a bit of a learning curve. And I really want to get rid of that, right? I want to bring our algorithms to more people, right? And I think the best way to do that is to make it super simple. iPhone app, you click on it, pick which algorithm, link your broker, you're done, right? Make it super simple and then have really fancy stuff for like tracking your algorithms, all that kind of thing. That's what we want to build out, right? So we're going to start working on our website first, okay? Uh, so we're going to do this in steps, right? And if we could raise money, we'll move faster, right? But we're moving in this direction anyways. Uh, so again, if you guys want to invest, let me know. Um, but uh, so step one is going to be our website that could basically track your algorithms, so we're going to build out a website and we've already built a lot of it. Um, it'll be a website you go to, whatever, analysis.loomywealth.com or maybe we'll give it some name. But basically, you'll be able to go to this website, link your algorithm that you're running in Replit to it and you'll be able to track it through the website. So you'll see minute by minute, what is it doing? How has it been doing? What's it trading? What's happening with it? We'll have uh, alerts and everything hooked up to it too. So if it's up a lot, we'll let you know. If something bad is happening, we'll let you know. So there's a whole monitoring system for uh, for your algorithms. And actually, uh, Emma is here. And Emma, um, I know we spoke recently about actually the beginnings of this, right? So um, I know you and I, we have a call scheduled on Friday as well, or I don't know when it's scheduled, but at some point we're supposed to speak. Um, and that is kind of the beginning of this website, right? Is we, we first want to make it so that whenever you run a LumiBot algorithm, it's possible to track it. We're going to make that by uh, creating a little server. It turns into a little server and then we can talk to it and find out what it's been doing. And then we can put, on the, put that on the website so you can see how your algorithm is performing, right? Now that's going to open up a lot of possibilities, right? Once we have that, a website that could track your algorithms, we can do some very interesting stuff, right? Like for example, you'll be able to see all of our, our algorithms, how they're doing minute by minute. So you can actually track all of them. And if you want to invest in them, we'll have like little buttons so you can actually use them, right? Make it easy to do that. Um, but then also we'll be able to have things like leaderboards, right? Whose algorithm has been performing the best this month, right? you know, maybe Houchi's in, in first place because he ran this algorithm. He's making a lot of money. Uh, second place will be, you know, Eric, maybe you ran this and you're making a ton of money too, but you haven't beat Houchi yet, right? So we can have like a little leaderboard. We can get really fun with this. Um, so that's the idea here. We're going to build out that website and actually be able to track these algorithms and actually see how everything is going, right? The step after that will be iPhone app, easy to launch, but that will come later, right? But uh, we plan to start working on this website very, very soon. Uh, we're also planning to update our old bots. Um, but what, what I've noticed is that we made a lot of new bots and they're very exciting and there's some really cool stuff behind them. Uh, but our old bots are not getting a lot of love, right? We actually have some really cool ones. Uh, for example, like our rolling calls bot, it was doing incredibly well for a while. Um, and then what I realized is if this thing had just bought another option earlier, it would be up a lot right? Like it, it dropped and it could be right back up to where it was before. But the way that this thing operates is only buys one option every 35 days or something like that. So it missed out on that last rally. So what I was working on is, is improving rolling calls to be able to add, to trade more at a time. Uh, we can also make it trade with put options and also adding configurations. So we're improving, improving the rolling calls strategy. Uh, another one that I really want to improve on is our Congress trading bot. We had a lot of hype around it. It was doing really well. Um, but then we ran in paper, had some issues when we ran in paper trading. So we kind of stopped doing it for a while. That's something I want to bring back and run again. So I'm, I'm slowly starting to go through our old algorithms and refining them, making them better, giving them all the new features that we have now and rerunning them again. Right. So you'll see a lot of these old bots start popping up again. Um, and there was one more thing that we're working on as well. I cannot remember right now what that is. Um, but that's uh, that's some of the things that we're working on over the next co coming weeks and months. Um, that also opens up the question, what else would you guys want to see? If you could have any features for that we would build out for you, any kind of products, features, or anything like that, what would you guys want to see from us? I actually wonder. I'll give you guys a second to respond because I know that can be, uh, you can turn on your microphone or you can uh, 
you could type it out, whatever is, is easier for you. But uh, I'm, I'm very curious to see what you guys, what other guys, uh, what you guys would want to see, right? Like what other things. Okay. Uh, more focus on the option strategies and adding features to them may improve the results. Uh, yeah, Eric. Yeah, yeah. We've been doing that already a lot. <laughs> so, Eric, when you start joining us, I, I know you're you're new here. Uh, join us on Tuesdays. I mean, we we focus a lot on option strategies. That has been a major focus of ours, and that will continue to be a focus of ours. Um, I personally find options to be very interesting because uh, not only do they provide you with a lot of leverage, um, but also you know futures give you leverage, forex gives you gives you leverage. But options in particular are very interesting because they have a different payout curve. It's not just straight leverage. There, there's like a flat part and, and a payout part. Uh, so you can come up with really, really interesting strategies using options. Uh, and specifically using algorithms with options is really, really good too because of the complexity involved and how fast you have to be with some of these things. So options is is something that is, is a really, really good thing for us to do. And we're going to continue to do that. So thank you for that feedback. Eric. Yeah, like I'd love to like, I don't know what data you guys have access to, but like I'd love to like play with some of the data that you might have access to. So if you see what uh, what the skew looks like, how high it is when vol's low um, and seeing if you want to put on the trade then or other things like, uh, I don't know, what is what is the, when when you start doing adding like profit taking to it, how does it increase the, the probability that you, you profit off of some of these strategies? Or, mm -hmm. or add some like uh, mean reversion to it. Um, I, I don't see that on it. I like hypothetically, like or in theory, uh, vol mean reverts, and maybe that could improve some of these strategies. Like, but I like what I see already. Like this, the strategies look great. Like they're they're doing well, but that doesn't mean that you might be able to improve them and reduce the the drawdown if we hit like a a bad period. So maybe even like turning them off. Uh, I don't know if we if we see indexes drop below a moving average or something like I I would I'd rather run something that runs a little bit less often, gets less trades, but is uh, more consistent over a longer period of time. Okay, yeah, that all, that all makes a lot of sense. Um, what it sounds to me is you really should be joining us on Tuesdays. <laughs> if you join us on Tuesday nights, like that's like all we do for hours, right? Are so and all these ideas that you have, just bring them up, right? Like you'll see it getting built. Be like, okay, well, what if we did this? And what if we did that? Um, that is that is what we spend our Tuesdays doing. So I think you'll enjoy that class very much. Sounds good. Cool. Awesome. Cool, cool. All right, okay. So uh, that's pretty much everything for the updates. Uh, for those of you that are not subscribers to our plans, I see a lot of you guys that are, right? So I think we're like 50-50 here, or maybe not 50-50. Most of you guys, I think, are subscribers. Uh, but for those of you that are not subscribers, we talked about a lot of stuff today that is um, for pro and all access plan only. <laughs> so if you want to get these algorithms, you want to run these things, you want to make some money doing the stuff, uh, you want to back test them, whatever, right? Uh, you should join uh, some of our plans. So here's our plans from our website. Starter, Pro, and All Access. Uh, pro Plan and Up is what gives you access to all the cool stuff. Starter Plan is kind of just, you know, you can see kind of some basic stuff. It's not anything that exciting. But Pro Plan and Up is where you actually get the really cool stuff that we're doing. Uh, and right now, we're actually doing a sale. Uh, you guys have probably gotten the emails. 50% uh, off the sign-up fee. Normally, it's $1,000 to sign up for the Pro Plan. That's now knocked down to $499, right? So you're saving 500 bucks on the sign-up fee. And then we also reduce the monthly fee by 30% as well uh, from $400 a month to $279 a month. All right. So if you guys want to save some money, this is the way to do it. Um, this sale is for Labor Day. So it's over on September 2nd. Um, so if you guys want to save some money, check this out. Here are your coupon codes. Use Labor S. Yeah, you have to add and enter in two coupon codes. Our system works like that. Um, enter in Labor SF on checkout to get 50% off the monthly fee. Labor sign up fee is what it stands for, 50. Uh, and then labor 30 will get you that monthly fee, right? So you have to enter both of these coupon codes at checkout in order to get these discounts, all right? Cool, all right. So uh, that leaves me with, uh, ask me anything. Um, is there anything that you guys have uh, questions about or 
really anything, any questions you guys have me for, uh, you got me here for uh, for a little while. Anything that you want to ask or you want clarified or you need help with or anything like that. I'll give you guys some time. Okay. Um, so Eric has a question: How to run a back test? Yeah, well, let's discuss that on Friday. That's that's pretty technical. Um, I don't think that's something we'll be able to cover right now. Um, again, I want I want to make some videos on how to do this too. So may, maybe even uh, maybe even if you're okay with it, Eric, you know, we could even record that session and turn that into a little class to give to others because I know a lot of people have had that same question. If if you're okay with it, we can we can yeah. record. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Um, so can we run paper trading on interactive brokers already? Yes, we can. How cheap. So if you want to run stuff on interactive brokers, you're going to have to use it, uh, do it using Docker. So not every strategy has the Docker file in it yet. Uh, but for example, the Condor Martingale does, there's a Docker file. You need a Docker file, you need start.sh. Those are two things that are required. And then, um, basically, you know, whatever service you want to run it on, as long as it uses Docker files, it's fine, right? So we use render.com. I think it's pretty easy to use. It's a little expensive, 25 bucks a month for this because uh, you need a little bit faster processor. You, you can't really get away with the, the cheapest processor because it's like running a bunch of stuff. Um, interactive Brokers is a pretty heavy app uh, and you have to run Interactive Brokers. So it like automatically runs it, clicks on buttons for you. It's weird how Interactive Brokers does that, but whatever. Um, so if you want to do that, um, basically you just need that Docker file and that start.sh and then any service that could run that, right? Well, if you need some help setting that up, let me know too. I can, I can help you out with that as well. Cool. Any other questions, guys? Awesome. No problem. Cool. Robert, I do have one question regarding the, uh, running it on Docker versus running it on Replit, uh, what, why would you choose one over the other? Obviously Replit is probably easier. Um, so I would choose Replit in pretty much every single situation. Um, Replit or uh, honestly, Replit just raised their their price too. They raised it to like 25 or 30 bucks a month. So I'm actually even starting to think maybe we should use something other than Replit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Replit is definitely the easiest way to do it. The only reason why you'd run Docker is to run, uh, interactive brokers because it cannot run in Replit. Um, Replit is just simply not sophisticated enough to run something like that. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So interactive brokers only. Right. Cool. Any other questions, guys? All right. Well, it was fantastic to see all of you. There's a lot of really uh, good faces here, you know, uh, a lot of familiar faces. Uh, for those of you that haven't signed up yet, what are you guys waiting for? <laughs> you know, um, sign up to one of our plans, join us, run these strategies that we talked about today um, and be a part of our community because it's uh, a lot of awesome people here. So cool. All right. Have a good night, guys. It's been a pleasure.